Do you know what the price of this machine is right now? Obviously, if you've seen other reviews, then you know the price of this machine. But if this is the first video that you've seen on the Artillery X3 Pro, go down to the comments right now and drop your thought on what you think the price is or what it should be. I'm interested to know because when we go through all of this and I share that price with you, I want to see if you're surprised. This is the Sidewinder X3 Pro, the 240 by 240 by 260 millimeter Marlin based speed demon from Artillery. We've been patiently waiting for Artillery to crank out more machines since we've had the X2 here in the studio. Now stick with me. We're going to go over all of its features, my thoughts, and where it fits in in this fast-moving industry. Let's go. Before we get started, let me give a big thank you to Artillery. Thanks for sending this over to us and letting us share it with our audience. Like every printer video, we got to talk about the build volume first. This one is 240 by 240 by 260 on the Z which puts it kind of in the middle range. So anywhere between 220 and 250 or 256, somewhere around there, is a good mid-range or mid-sized printer. The build plate gets up to 100C, and it has a double-sided flexible PEI textured build plate, which is pretty standard now. This machine has auto bed leveling, and it actually does a 49-point auto bed level, and it does have manual knobs for backup, but I didn't have to touch those. Mine, mine was pretty flat and level out of the box. It has a filament wiper on the bed, it's not multicolor, and I think that's just used to clean the nozzle before it actually does the 49-point uh, bed leveling. By default, the Z-offset on mine was a little bit high. Um, I had issues with print sticking initially, so I just reached into the interface and just lowered that Z-offset, I think, by about a half a millimeter, and everything stuck perfectly from there. Now, the hot end gets up to 300C, and it has a dual-gear extruder and a quick-change nozzle. It comes equipped with a 0.4-millimeter volcano style, but I believe it's a custom nozzle. It's, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as to say proprietary, because I believe the threads are the same, um, but, uh, but the, just the, the tip of that nozzle is a little bit different. And what this basically means is this machine is going to be capable of doing your PLAs, your PTGs, your TPUs, your ABSs, and things like that. Yeah, um, you, you can do abrasive filaments, you can do all that, that's not a problem with this machine. Printing speeds on this machine are quick, so that's what Artillery is kind of promoting with this machine, is that they're calling it a super fast Marlin-based printer. So 300 millimeters per second is what they're advertising, but I think most people are going to be printing anywhere from about 150 to about 250 millimeters per second. And of course, with faster printing, you have to have better cooling. So the Sidewinder X2 had, I believe, a 4020 parts cooling fan, and this one is equipped with a 5015. So quite a bit more air. Well, I, I can't say quite a bit more air. What is it? I think it's about 10% more air, if I'm thinking correctly. But it is noticeably louder. When I first began printing with this, that fan had a had a terrible whine to it. But after the first handful of hours of printing, I'd say maybe the first four to six to eight hours of printing, um, that kind of died off and went away. It's just louder. It's moving more air, but I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. It has a pretty nice display, and the display is attached with a, with a little flexible cord, like a telephone cord. Um, you can pull it, I don't know, about a foot away, maybe 10 to 12 inches away from the machine. It's a 4.3-inch touch display. And uh, I'd say the interface is a significant upgrade over the Artillery X2, which you'll kind of hear me comparing this machine to that machine quite a bit during this video. But the interface is really nice. It's very intuitive. Uh, the touch interface is super responsive. And I kind of look at that user experience is this is something that I think even novices, when they first get this machine, they'll be able to easily navigate and find the things they're looking for. Picking up and pulling the interface away from the machine. That's not something that I think I will particularly use, but I think if you're in a farm environment where the machines aren't necessarily at eye level, or if you keep your printers on racks, then I think that could be something that's useful for you. This video is generously sponsored by me. That's right. This is LM Sparkle Green. It is the absolute best and most beautiful filament that's ever been made. It is a PLA Pro with sparkle in it. That's right, and it comes on a really cool collector's spool. I'll have a link on the screen and in the description below. Your support helps us out a lot. Now, you heard me mention Marlin a couple of times up to this point. This particular machine is running a relatively new version of Marlin, and even though it's a limited implementation of input shaping, it's really cool and it gets me excited about Marlin having that type of potential because in our space right now, software is what's going to be the next evolution, right? So hardware is there. We have these incredible bed slingers that are very capable of going high speed. We have Core XY machines uh, that are available, but it's really going to come down to the software now and come down to the user experience. So this gets me excited 
that we're seeing artillery playing around with some of the great features that are now kind of on the bleeding edge or the latest developments for Marlin. It has a top mounted spool holder, which is pretty normal, and it has the classic filament runout sensor here mounted on a swivel. Now, I had problems with my filament runout sensor several times into this particular print, a good six, eight, ten hours into this print, three different times, and my filament runout sensor tripped. There was still filament in it, but it tripped, and that caused the print to pause. The first two times, it really didn't bother me. The third time really annoyed me, and I went ahead and canceled the print, and then I just went ahead and unplugged the filament runout sensor and continued on from there. I never reached out to artillery. These things are pretty cheap, and I'm sure if I would have contacted them, they'd have just sent me a new one. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. But good news, resume printing works just fine. If you remember the Artillery Sidewinder X2 had that issue with resume printing. If you paused a print, um, if you did anything to stop that print, the resume printing was not going to work, and it was just a nightmare. So there was no filament swaps. If you were working with that X2, you had to do a filament swap. You had to do that on the fly, and you had to wait till you were on infill, and you had to cut that and feed that filament through, and uh, you were taking some chances. But it's nice to see that the X3 Pro, that's all fixed. That's all working with this particular firmware. Now, getting prints from your computer to the printer, that's done with a micro SD card. So there's no networking, there's no Wi-Fi or anything like that. A nice feature are the lights. It has a set of LEDs that are actually on the print head that are status indicators on when the hot end is heating. Um, it also has a cool little LED light strip. Up. Matter of fact, let's see, can we turn it on? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it has an awesome little LED light strip under the top um, that illuminates the printer and makes for taking better photos, of course, but also lets you kind of see what's going on. You can really get down there close and uh, take a look at those layer lines and, and uh, see that print quality wise printing. Now, if you're one of those people that love dual Z printers, well, you're in luck because the X3 Pro is dual Z motors and uh, linked at the top of the belt. Now, you're going to want to give us a subscribe. Artillery is sending us over the X4 Pro, and so we'll have content out for that soon. And also, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be getting a much larger machine that I think you'll be interested in. Now, the overall aesthetic of the machine, I really, really enjoy. I am liking that these machines are coming more finished. They're coming more polished. They're enclosed. I'm liking that there's injection molded parts on them, that everything about these machines is feeling much more appliance-like, which in the end is going to invite a newer, different type of user to our space, which is ultimately just going to make it better. It's just going to grow it. And uh, these are the machines that do it. And that price, stick around. I'm going to tell you the price of this machine. It's going to blow your mind. Print quality is really nice. I was very pleased, very pleasantly surprised. And I printed some of the models that are on the machine. And I also sliced up some of my own. This is the 37 minute Benchy. So you should expect this to look good on a machine that can do uh, an 18 minute Benchy. And uh, I have to say, it does look great. Um, the deck of it looks fantastic. Uh, this is printed in Polymaker's Polylight Starlight Neptune, and it looks phenomenal. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't find a thing to complain about it, and uh, so you'll be looking at some B-roll of it here closer, but re really great print. Now, this is pretty darn cool. This is a collapsible sword that was uh, included on the printer, and this is the one that actually took me about three, no, four. This is print number four because of that filament runout sensor. Uh, but it turned out really, really, really nice. I'll, I hope I can get some great B-roll shots of it for you here. But that is just darn cool. And it turned out really nice. And I didn't have to do anything special to make it work. And I'm pretty impressed. So we'll get some good B-roll shots of it here so you can just see exactly the kind of quality uh, that you get from this machine. But it's really nice. I like it. This is a Veroni Deer that I printed in Polymaker's Polylight Starlight Jupiter. And I don't know if this color was a great color to do it. I mean, it's a great color for the print because it makes the print look really fun and really cool. But I'm not quite sure if this is really great for seeing layer lines. But it is a cool print. My wife really likes it, and uh, she wants me to print a much larger one, so I think I'll do that. But it turned out really, really, really nice. And it kind of shows that with that 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that that thing can get in there and do some detail, and uh, all of that's done without supports. So, um, yeah, the machine's the machine's quite capable. Nice. Now, this is the 18 minute Benchy. Now, I'm gonna have some B-roll of this 18 minute Benchy next to the 38 minute Benchy, and I think this Benchy's actually not 18 minutes. 
I think uh, it was like 21 minutes total, but that was including the heating time. But I'll have some B-roll of these two prints side by side, so you can see this Jupiter is the 18 minute, and this Neptune is the 38 minute. And you'll see B-roll of it printing. It is flat impressive. So this is a bed slinger um, cruising at 300 millimeters per second, and the quality is beautiful. And I didn't do anything other than throw on this Polymaker filament. And of course, I will have links to all of the models and the filaments in the description below. For the prints that I sliced myself, I did that in Prusa Slicer. I'm not super experienced with Cura. I don't really spend a lot of time in it. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of Cura. But I didn't want to use it, so I just created a Prusa Slicer profile for the Sidewinder X2, changed the dimensions, and then what I did is I used this extrusion test. And I'll have some B-roll footage of it here. But basically, it's this little index here. And it's one, and you print two of them, and then you go in and you adjust the extrusion multiplier. And uh, what you're looking for is you want these two to just slip together with no friction, and you want them to hold. And if you can get the extrusion multiplier just right, you can slip them together, there's no friction, there's no slop, and they'll hold just perfectly. And that's how you know you have your uh, extrusion multiplier set right, and that's how you just get beautiful prints. And I recommend this, and I'll have that link uh, here in the description of the video, but I recommend this whenever you get a new printer or whenever you're playing with new filament, run this particular print and get your extrusion multiplier dialed in. For me and Prusa Slicer, mine was 0 0.92. And uh, so, for instance, on the JG Maker R1, I had mine at 0 0.91 for that printer with Polymaker filament. And on this machine, 0 0.92 is my multiplier. Are you ready? Now we'll talk about price. Hopefully you dropped your price in the comments below so that we kind of got that, got your expectations. This loaded machine is $219 at the time of filming. And what we're seeing is we're seeing compression in our industry. We are seeing features like this that should be on machines that are somewhere between four and $500 or more. And we're seeing that, that downward pressure where we're driving those features that are on those more expensive printers or where it was on those more expensive printers down to the two to three hundred dollar range, and that is just fantastic. Now, people are going to say, "Well, what about a three hundred dollar machine?" There's other brands out there that offer far more at three hundred or four hundred or five hundred. But here's what I'm trying to explain here: there is a space in this industry for all of these printers. This particular machine at two hundred nineteen dollars is going to fit perfectly for people that are in that two hundred dollar budget that have a hard budget of two hundred or two hundred and fifty dollars. And now, compared to what you would have gotten a year ago. At $200 or 250 this is what you're getting. You are getting one of the most advanced machines in our space, feature loaded at $219. And art so artillery, artillery is not playing around. And I'm excited to see what they're going to do in the new year because I've seen some of it and I, and I don't think I can share it with you, but it is fantastic. So this machine right now, $219, um, highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. And if you'd like to have your name on the screen with all these other wonderful people, we would love to have you as a YouTube member. That definitely helps us uh, create content here on YouTube. Happy printing.